all good and that you all had a great day i am here i am here to give you all your purple nightcap i'm a still coming from the book uh she called me woman nigeria is queer women speak i do not own the rights to this music and the theme for tonight is when somebody loves you back okay and the reason that is the theme because this excerpt from um tq's testimony which is the second testimony in this book um really stuck out to me and it says dun 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 and i quote we're still together it has been four or five years now our relationship is perfect perfect it's good to have someone who loves you back you will feel happy whenever you're with that person end quote um, being in a, a situation where somebody loves you back seems like a, a rare thing nowadays, especially for people who've been in relationships and reciprocity wasn't um, something that was evident. Um, a lot of I found myself in a lot of relationships that where I wasn't loved back, but for that I wasn't loved back. And now that I look back, I see that Erica really wasn't loving herself, and if she really because I wasn't really loving myself, I couldn't demand that somebody else truly loved me or teach them how to love me because I was still figuring out who I was, right? And then the love that I received in my childhood just wasn't adequate enough for me to understand how do I offer myself self-love, right? The reason I say this is because um, in my childhood, I didn't have a voice. As a child, you do what you're told, right? And that's it. You don't question anything. Uh, you don't talk back, right? And I was a talking back child that I always got popped in the mouth. Like I was a child that tried to ask as many questions as I can, but I was always shut down, right? So I really didn't have a voice. And if I didn't have a voice, how can I articulate the, uh, the ways that I felt? So I suppressed a lot of things. I tried to journal, but my journaling was discovered and it really wasn't private anymore. So I just had all these different obstacles in my way that kind of hindered me from understanding who Erica is, what Erica wants, who Erica is gonna be, right? Um, and I remember when I went to my grandmother and I told her, I said, hey, I think I like women. I was like 20, 21, I'm 31 now. And she was like, never try it, right? So again, I was shut down also because you have to think about it when we really don't have a voice or we don't give our children or other people spaces to have a voice, sometimes they tend not to think for themselves. So I was depending on everybody to give me what I needed without asking, right? So I didn't... I do in regards to theology my grandmother was my pastor right her living room was my sanctuary and her altar was my lap whatever my grandmother taught me about god and church and theology that's what i knew to be true right i didn't think outside of anything um that she told me and when i finally got to the point of doing so so much tension rose right because i was like well this isn't right but this is what we've been doing you know i just had all these questions because now erica is gaining a voice she's not only talking back she's thinking through things that have happened and given alternative um given uh, alternative applications given alternative reasons anything that came to mind now that i was grown right and i had this space and they couldn't tell me i couldn't talk back this is when i started thinking about things so myself this is when i started voicing my opinions right um and even in that young age i still didn't understand who i was or what i wanted i was just going through life i don't, I don't know what i was doing in my 20s um uh, I know what I'm doing now and I just figured out by the time I was 28. But anyway, this is not about me. I just gave that just to give you some context about the reason why I, um, why her statement stood out to me, right? But this woman, her name is TQ. Um, this was She was in a relationship with a woman named Q. This was the first relationship she had with a woman when she was in grade school, right? Um, she was madly in love with this woman. But there was um, a bit of trauma um, around their relationship because one day they were caught together and her partner's name is m so when they were caught they were caught by m's uncle right and m was beaten by her uncle and m's uncle also outed tq to tq's brother and his wife right so i spoke about outing people before and i told you all this is a very dangerous thing right um it's a very thing dangerous thing to out somebody because you're taking that agency away from them and you are telling a portion of their story that you know nothing about because you didn't have the experience um the experience or the testimonies that led to them actually saying that i am gay i'm trans i am a lesbian right um you don't know those stories you have no rights to them all you have is an imagination of what other people have grown through but nobody else's story is the same right so if you are somebody where your confidentiality ends at a certain point let the person 
who is telling you their story know let them know like hey once i get to a certain space or once i get with a certain individual my confidentiality ends and i'm more prone to tell this person or i'm announcing this space something that you have told me if you give them this disclaimer hey jimmy if you give them this disclaimer it provides them protection right you're offering agency to them and letting them know that hey you have you have the right to tell me this or you have the right not to tell me this based on this disclaimer i think that's the fairest thing you could do i do not believe that confidentiality is supposed to end at a certain point i think confidentiality is what it is especially if you are a minister or somebody like a therapist you know what i'm saying you know you need to keep certain things to yourself right you know you cannot tell other people what folks confiding you about right when you out somebody it can be a very traumatizing experience and it could send people back to the closet you don't know what's in that closet they could have left portions of depression in that closet they could have left suicidal tendencies in that closet right you don't know so just do not out anybody and if you think that you can that you think and if you think you're going to tell what they're confiding in you about give them a disclaimer to let them know that your confidentiality ends at a certain place or with a certain person okay i'll say but um her comment, it's good to have someone who loves you back. Of course, I was playing Teddy Pendergrass. I did not own the rights to that music. I don't know if I said that or not. But how many of us have been in a situation where we could say it's good to have somebody who loves you back? I know a lot of you all can say yes, and I know a lot of you all can say no. But, like, what does that feel like to be in a situation where somebody doesn't love you back, right? When you're not getting reciprocity, right? Well, you're thirsting for the same type of love that you are giving and why do you stay there why do you stay in a place where you are not getting back what you're putting in right why is it because we fell in love with potential is it because we have false hopes is it because we truly don't know how to love ourselves is it because we've never been in a relationship before and we don't know what to expect and is it this theology or notions of submission that women are we supposed to give all our love and men not supposed to give anything back to us or if you're in same gender loving relationships right if you're giving somebody all you have and they're not giving you anything back why are you still there if you've been there two five ten fifteen years what is keeping you there is it because you're afraid to try something different? Is it because it's hard to let go? Is it because you're familiar or comfortable with this person? Why are you still there? Are you holding on to false promises, right? Are you holding on to old promises? Why are you still there? Why are you still there? And I'm not beating you up for this. Trust me, I was there with a person for nine years and I just let it go. When I say just let it go, I'm talking about a week ago, child. A week ago, I'm still fresh, right? And I'm praying that I leave it on the other side of the Jordan because I don't want to go back, right? So it's like, yes, why are you still there? What are they giving you? How is it benefiting you, right? Are you Do you have peace in this situation or not? Because if you do not have peace, I think that you need to leave because sometimes the absence of certain things or people in our life gives us the peace that we are looking for. Why are you still there, beloved? Go. I want you to go. If you're in a space or if you're in a relationship where nothing is given back to you, not even an ounce of what you are giving in regards to being in a relationship with somebody, why are you still there? And what is it costing you? What have you sacrificed? What portions of yourself have you denied or given up? Think about that and ask yourself, is it worth staying? And why are you still there? You know, do a pro and con sheet on one side, pros and the other side, cons, and see, like, how is it benefiting you? Is it doing you more damage than it is good? Is it hindering you or is it prospering you? And if it's hindering you and it's doing you more damage than good, leave, beloved. You have the power to leave, right? And when I say that, I'm thinking about women that are in abusive relationships, right? And how do they leave? How do you leave an abusive relationship when you physically can't? Physically can't? I don't want to tell you just to pray, right? But you can ask the spirit for a way of escape. And if you do ask the spirit for a way of escape, take it. Know that you're worthy of the escape. And whatever fear your abuser has put into you, don't let that be the reason why you don't take it.